Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. From nuclear to privatization, the South African electricity sector has been capturing headlines this week. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about the latest developments. Hi Terence. Hi Tracy. There have been a number of pronouncements about the possible investment or private investment into ESCOM. How should we be taking these statements? Well, I think that, as you say, there have been a number of pronouncements, but that it's, it's as clear as mud. I think what we have got confirmation of is uh, Finance Minister Nkhlantlanen has said Treasury is definitely looking at private investment into ESCOM in the form of maybe selling non-core ESCOM assets, in the form of possibly selling some ESCOM or injecting uh, private skills and equity into power station assets, or possibly selling a portion of the company itself. We had the uh, African National Congress uh, General Se uh, Secretary General Gwede Montash talking about the Chinese model, which would talk to the latter point of, uh, you know, uh, having a part of the company uh, available to, uh, to for private investors to buy into, and a possible private listing or partial listing of Eskom on, say, the JSE. And then we had uh, Public Enterprises Minister Lynn Brown saying that she was not in favour of privatisation. Um, and she felt that the end state for energy uh, needed to be worked out first before we could, uh, uh, should be doing any major restructuring or of ESKIM. So we've got quite uh, conflicting messages coming out. But I think the strongest voice uh, in this is, is in from the Treasury uh, in the sense that they've said, look, look at our fiscal constraints and look at the tariff trajectory. Those are the two constraints on, uh, those are the two of the three tools that can be used to raise money for ESKIM. So you can either raise the tariffs, which we already have had steep increases, and we're looking uh, down the barrel of yet another steep increase uh, with another application made, which will raise the tariff for this year to around 25% from the current 12%. But that still has to be approved by NERSA. And uh, in terms of the other uh, tool, which is uh, equity from the fiscus, we've already said, uh, seen that there's a commitment of 23 billion uh, from the National Treasury that's going to flow into ESCOM. Um, and that's over and above what's already been injected over the last few years. And I think what uh, the Finance Minister is saying is that we've reached the limit of what uh, both, um, well, mostly what the fiscus can do, and we're getting to the edge of what the tariff can do. So we're having to look at other options to, to get uh, uh, to recapitalize ESCOM. And that's why they're looking at these various um, these three uh, models of non-core asset sales of ESCOM assets, core asset sales in the form of power stations, uh, um, partial, it wouldn't be a full power station sales from the looks of things, and then the possible partial listing of the utility. But it's early days and I think these things are going to take some time to, uh, to go through the processes. I must also understand there's a, there's a very high resistance to the word privatization or, uh, and fragmentation of ESCOM coming from the alliance partners, the labor movement is objects to it strongly, so does the South African Communist Party. So it's going to be a, a tightrope that's, that's walked by uh, the government on this issue. And I think Gwede Montash's statement was trying to say, you know, that this is not uh, privatization, but we're looking at a Chinese model. This is China being uh, a communist country, looking at a model where we can bring capital in, we can bring some market discipline in. Um, put, uh, and uh, better visibility of the governance processes but still retain control. And I think that's the underlying point. Whatever happens here is that uh, the ANC-led government is going to want to rate, retain control in ESCOM. And a timeline has also been given for nuclear procurement? Yes, uh, what we've got from uh, Energy Minister Tina Jomat pedersen is an announcement that in the second quarter of government's financial year, I must remember that uh, the uh, financial year for South Africa starts on April 1, so it's not a calendar year, um, is, is uh, we're going to start the uh, process of procuring this nuclear capacity. We're still talking about the 9,600 megawatts, which is in the uh, integrated resource plan of 2010, which means that the updated version hasn't been adopted by cabinet. And, uh, you know, which th and that update had talked about a much lower uh, procurement number because of the change in the demand outlook. And she is still talking about uh, building this first uh, unit of the fleet by 2023, which is not long away now. I think 
Um, that's, that's a very ambitious target. So uh, the minister indicated that by the end of, end of this financial year, which is, you must remember is March next year, they would like to have taken something to Cabinet around who the strategic partner or partners could be. We know that there's been these vendor parade workshops that have taken place with the Russians, the Canadians, the Chinese, the Koreans, uh, the Japanese. And uh, you know these have taken place um, uh, over the last few months. There have also been intergovernmental agreements uh, around this nuclear program. I think the Americans were also part of that process. So uh, there have been, it has been building to where a point where we start having a, uh, what they say, transparent, fair and competitive process, which is what is required under our, our rules of public procurement. But I think there's still uh, a long way to go and we're going to have to see how that process is going to unfold. And I think there's going to be obviously a lot of attention paid to whether it really truly is fair, transparent and competitive because of the reportage that uh, I think especially emerged when it was announced that we had signed an intergovernment agreement with the Russians and uh, Rosatom, where it was uh, pronounced almost as a done deal. So there's a lot of skepticism around this process. And I think, um, you, I think that the, the government is maybe being a little bit ambitious both with the size of the procurement, because it's going to be involve a massive amount of money to build and skills and implementation capacity, which we've shown with Madupi and Kusili, which we, we really don't have. And um, also those, those time frames look unrealistic of 2023 for the first unit. So we, I think we're going to see some adjustments. I think there's going to be, again, as we're seeing with Eskom, there's a more new realism from the National Treasury saying, you know, we've exhausted the envelope in terms of our, what our fiscal resources are. And I think they're going to want to really see bang for the buck around this nuclear thing. So I think there'll be, once we enter the more uh, serious part of uh, the business end of this whole process, which is the bidding phase, I think there's going to be a lot more serious attention given to the numbers and whether we can uh, afford this. And we can only hope as South Africans that um, this process is done transparently and openly, because if it's not, I think that the, the, the risk of legal action and the implementation risks down the line, as well as our reputational risks are huge. And, and because it's going to be the biggest uh, undertaking, or uh, engineering undertaking, un uh, since the democratic era of 1994, I think we must under also understand that there are huge financial risks. Processes are currently being advanced by more power from independent power producers. What does this entail? Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the good news stories of the energy space at the, or the electricity space in South Africa at the moment. We've seen the renewable energy program advancing. Um, you know, it has it had some stop start because of grid connection issues. But on the whole, we've been moving ahead and we've uh, procured over 5,000 megawatts through that program. And there's now a process underway to have a determination to add another 6,000 megawatts plus under the renewable program, plus mop up whatever capacity was bid in the first four rounds. And that didn't quite m uh, make it. So there's going to be a, a shortened, accelerated process to see if some of those projects can't be brought in. Uh, a lot sooner, so that's that's on track, and I think we already saw the round four announcement, and uh, I think we're going to see the round four plus, which is this mopping up process, quite soon. And then we we're looking at uh, in the coal space, where there is a bidding process underway already for 2,500 megawatts, or well, actually less than that, around 1,600 megawatts, but it looks like it might be expanded to 2,500, which will be the full determination that was was announced by the previous um, energy minister. And uh, the only thing there is that they have, they have hitting some snags and they felt that they've had to extend the, the deadline for bid submissions. So that was initially going to be June. It's now been extended to the end of August. So, but there is at least progress on the coal front. On the gas side, where I think it's about where is the gas and how are we going to source it um, before, uh, you know, m before we maybe start mining for shale gas or uh, drilling offshore. And uh, that, therefore, there's a, a request for information process that's now been launched, which is a pretender process. And that will guide the way that the gas to fire power station tender is eventually evolved. And that, that uh, RFI has now was released this week. And we should see the tender later this year for the gas to, fi gas to power uh, tender process. And then there was also movement on the cogeneration, 1,800 megawatts of cogeneration ca uh, capacity. It is also going to be procured through an accelerated process. 
So I think on the RPP front, we're starting to see a lot more action, and we're talking about uh, possibly by 2022 having 17,000 megawatts of RPP capacity in South Africa's mix. Thanks, Terence. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.